Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. This is a project that I have wanted to work on for a while here and I want to show you guys what it's all about. So this is a Still FS81 trimmer. Now this is an older trimmer, it's probably about 20 years old, but everything's metal, they're built really well, and this was considered to be a fantastic commercial grade trimmer. One of the biggest problems that you can have with one of these trimmers is everything can work perfectly but the fuel tank has a propensity to crack. This means that everything else works great, but it leaks fuel. And it happened on this era or this generation of trimmers. I think it was actually on one of the FS56 trimmers, the older ones, um, where I've seen this issue before. But on the 81, in my opinion, definitely a trimmer worth saving, especially if you're just gonna be a homeowner and using it. One of the things you can do is buy an aftermarket fuel tank and now it doesn't bolt up exactly, but you can buy this fuel tank there. I'll, I'll leave a link down below and there's a several different spots where you can buy them. And with that comes a mounting bracket kit. And my intention is to install it today and show you guys exactly what I do. So let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do before I get into the kit and the aftermarket replacement is remove the original tank, just so I can help line things up. Now, like everything on a piece of steel equipment, it is a T27 bolt and a T27 bit. That is going to get you what you need, which is removing. And then it's just two on this side as well. On the front. And it comes off like that. So those bolts were in the um, exact same spot, just on the front, right here, in there on the other side. And on this era of trimmer, there is only one fuel line, and it is right in here. Let's see if I can get it to focus there, there it is. So all you need to do is uh, use a flathead to pry that off, and then the whole tank should come off. Just like that. So this is what we have in the kit, and let's go over that in a second. And this is what we have for the original tank. Now, the crack in this tank, usually it happens right in these corners. It's kind of hard to see there, but there it is right there. So you either drop the trimmer or it hits off a rock or um, just over time, these tanks, oh, well, that's an even better one right there. So these tanks were made out of an inferior plastic and as a result, um, they ended up cracking and it's very common in this era of steel trimmers. So the first thing that I'm noticing here is the sheer size difference between these two tanks. Can't even fit it on the camera there to show you. But it appears that the new tank is far larger than the old one, which is great in my opinion. I mean, as long as you're strong enough to hold a heavy old trimmer like that, a little bit more fuel shouldn't make that big of a difference. Okay, so I have the trimmer upside down right now and they provide this tube in order to, I guess, act as an anti-vibration um, method against the back of the tank. So let's get this tube and slice it down the center. Be very careful with this. Okay, almost there. So it's open. And then they want you to slide it onto this rear bracket. And then that'll eventually go into the back here, or here, I guess, as an anti-vibration piece. Again, this is an aftermarket kit. So the next part we're gonna do is mount this bracket. It's these two T27s at the back.
Okay, and then just for fun, let's test fit it. And it kind of hooks in just like that. Show you that from another angle. So the next part of this kit looks like it's using these two mounting holes with these two bolts to go into these holes right here on either side. You'll see, if we have this mounted like that, the holes line up right here and right here. So let's pop these ones out. And I think this is just going to be for measuring purposes because as you can see, we have quite a gap here. I'll bring you up closer and check that out. Yeah, so that's the gap we have. So what we wanna do is put a nut on this side and a nut on this side, and then we know exactly where they need to go so we can cinch them tight. So the best way to do that now, leave these bolts in here, pop this bracket off the back, and then we can slide the tank in and out how we want it. What does it look like about there? Kind of make them both equal there. Then we'll slide the tank back on and put the other nuts on and cinch them up. Okay, that looks pretty good there guys, pretty well even. So now we know that we can put the rear nuts on, and obviously we can make fine adjustments here if we need to. Okay, so at least it's bolted on there now. Now this is where you can make your fine adjustments here to level it out and get the tank sitting where you want it. And at that, this point, guys, I'm not going to suggest tightening anything, anything up really all that tight until you get the back bracket on. So let's do that now. Yeah, it's pretty sturdy. So now I'm going to grab my eight mil socket, slide it over the end, and then just tighten these up. Now, if you're having some issues, I suggest using an eight mil on the other side to kind of just hold it snug from spinning, but I don't think you will. And then just tighten it up. Now we are going into plastic, so we don't need to go too tight. Snug is good, a good way to describe it. Up there, that's snug, and then the same thing on the other side. So there we go, guys. Now the tank is absolutely secure. The only thing we haven't done now at this point is fit this guard on. So I had removed these two in order to kind of test fit things here before I made this video. 
and it doesn't line up. This is sometimes what happens with aftermarket parts. Maybe they used an FS86 or an FS56, but it doesn't exactly contour the way it should around here to act as a guard. So then I thought, well, okay, what does the original one look like? Hmm. Not tall enough. Not enough for at least peace of mind for me. So what do you do? Well, if I, I can get one bolt in here, but then it sits cockeyed like this or vice versa, because it is, it is hitting on this piece here, right here. So all I'm going to do is file this down some in order to get it to fit smoothly so that I can bolt this on because I know how important it is to protect this fuel tank. Okay, so I just did a quick angle grinder job there. You know, not necessarily the prettiest, but in terms of a quick modification to make this work, I think everything lines up now. So let's bolt it on. Okay, so the tank is secure, the guard is secure. Let's flip it over and just see how effective that really is. There we go, I think that's what we're after. I've got some good clearance here underneath the guard. The back bracket looks like it's secure. The tank doesn't wanna move and that guard is on there now. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is hook up fuel to the carburetor. Now, have a peek inside the tank here and see which one of these lines is the vent and which one is the fuel pickup. If you recall on the older tank, there was only a fuel pickup because the older style tanks had the vent in the top of the cap. So the fuel tank would vent through the cap and there was just a single pickup here. So you'll see in the kit that you're supplied with a tank vent. And that will go in either one of these, depending on which one the fuel filter is connected to. And I can look down in here and see that the fuel filter is connected to the black line. So I know that the clear line is the vent. So let's put that vent in now. Just like that. And then all we do is take this line and hook it up to the bottom of the carburetor. You might have to give a slight pull to bring a little more slack in off the fuel line there we go not a big deal you can always put the excess back but let's get that line onto the carburetor intake just like that and then again any excess that we have here we can shove back into the tank and then let's say for this tank vent we can just tuck it up underneath the carburetor if we want we can put a little zip tie on here so let's do that and make it nice and clean and the last thing you want to do is cut your hand on one of those zip ties while you're filling the tank so let's just make sure we cut it off and it's not sharp and that's really all there is to it guys that's how the new tank sits with the bracket and then of course the guard sits nicely up off the ground. See the daily under there? And the cool thing is it's considerably larger than this tank. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but it certainly is a larger tank. Yeah, there's a better end. So now that all there is left to do is to wait for the snow to stop, for the spring to come out and for those weeds to pop up so we can Take care of business here with this awesome steel FS81, a blast from the past. Thanks everybody for watching the video. Hopefully this helps at least one person out there. I know I've been waiting a while to do this project. It's probably been sitting for about a few months now. This will probably work on a few different trimmers of this same 
era. I think it's pretty awesome that I could breathe some life into this old trimmer. I'm excited to use it. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you like the video, leave me a comment, like and subscribe to the channel if you like. I'm always doing something out here in the shop and I love that you guys are along for the ride. Thanks again for watching. Take care.